Hello and welcome back to another video. Feels really good to say that it's been far too long since I've made one of these videos on the channel. But it's good to be back. Uh, this is going to be episode one of my building series. Uh, this is going to be the Imperial Communications Base. And this is going to be a collaboration that me and my friend Daniel are doing for Brick Fair Virginia this year. So it should be pretty fun to display it there. It's going to be the first convention in two years with COVID and all that, so feels good to be back. But pretty much what the mock is gonna be is it's gonna be a two gray base plate by two and a half gray base plate layout, and there's gonna be a mountain in the front with lava falls pouring down, bunker down there at the bottom too. It's gonna lead into an imperial base that's gonna be on top of the mountain, and there's gonna be a hangar and a communications area and all that good stuff should have lights in there too so that should look pretty cool but yeah let's get right into it all right starting off with the plans um, here you can see the concept art that me and Daniel found and uh, we're actually going to be trying to replicate this pretty accurately Daniel is going to be building the back section um, with the big communications array and that nice looking hanger and then I'm going to be building the front section with the indented hangar area. So here we can see the layout of the base on the base plates. Um, obviously it's going to be the two gray wide by two gray and one green uh, long. And then here we can kind of see the plans of the mock. Uh, the front area here with the green base plates is going to be the main floor level with the lava flows and just dark orange texturing pretty much. And then there's going to be probably like 16 to 20 studs in. The mountain is going to start. That's going to go up probably around 20, 25 studs, something like that. And then that's going to go pretty much to the end of the green base plates. And then at the gray base plates, the main base is going to start. And it's going to be evenly split between the four gray base plates. The first two are basically just going to be the indented hanger area. And then the last two are going to be the main hangar and the communications array. Um, here you can kind of see what it's going to look like just from the front where you got the bunker here at the bottom. Obviously the dark orange and medium flesh texturing at the ground. And then the mountain with the lava falls coming down on both sides of the bunker. And then straight above the bunker is going to be this little looking out area. And this is going to look through into a little room and then on the other side of the room the same type of windows are going to be looking out into the indented hangar. So that should look pretty cool. We're going to have some officers and control panels and stuff like that in there. And then this big gray box is representing the hangar pretty much. And then the um, light bluish gray box is not to scale, but that's pretty much what the or where the communications array is going to be. Okay, so I do have a package here. And this should be lug bulk. So let's open this up right here. Got the list of parts here. First thing here we got. Focus it on here. Mountain slopes. 2x2 two two dark orange tile, 2x2 two two light bluish gray tile, some of these, I believe these are new, um, they're inverted brackets, they're inverted brackets but they have two studs on the top instead of one, that's pretty cool. Um, then we got one by one medium nougat tile, one by one dark orange plates, some new wedge plates, two by four. The other side of those new wedge plates, some brown grass. Uh, I believe this is pearl dark gray ingots. It's pretty sick. Some of these olive green uh, stems, regular green 
leaf pieces. I think these were on, these were on pick a brick for Easter, I think, but they were light green. So normal green is pretty, pretty nice. And we got some of these. These are the um, two by two corner slopes, really useful for mountains. And then here we have one by two by two mountain slopes, also really useful for mountains. And then here we have some of these newer macaroni slope pieces. Those also, I'll have some fun messing around with those. And then here we have um, dark orange one by one brackets. I'll zoom in on this. Like that. And then we have one by one light bluish gray inverted brackets dark orange one by one tile uh, some of these macaroni tube pieces dark orange one by two slopes uh, one by one tiles in dark bluish gray definitely going to be using some of those in this mock uh, dark bluish gray one by one plates Two by two medium flesh or medium nougat tiles. One by one medium nougat plates. These are also really nice right here. These are medium nougat corner one by one tiles. Very cool. Dark orange one by two plates. Um, dark orange cheese slopes. Dark bluish gray ingots light bluish gray ingots, two by two dark bluish gray tile, one by one uh, light bluish gray plates. And then here we have some of these. These are inverted medium flesh brackets. So those are gonna be pretty fun to mess around with. Um, light bluish gray, one by three curved slopes. Um, some of these bricks with the uh, profile. So those are pretty cool. Definitely going to use some of those. And then here we have some flex tubes. Some of these pieces in light bluish gray. One by three slopes in dark bluish gray. Some of these things. These are one by one round tiles, I guess you could call them. Uh, I have some of those in light bluish gray, so I got some in dark bluish gray, but that is the haul. All right, so I have a package here, and I might have to explain this one a little bit. Uh, this should be a thing of cutting boards and lights. So, cut this open here. So here are the lights, I assume, and here are the cutting boards. Toss them here, and toss the box. All right, so I have everything out now. Uh, here we have the lights. Um, these are the remotes that came with the lights, and these are the cutting boards right here. Um, so pretty much, obviously. For the, um, for the mock, we wanted to have lights in the mock. For our purposes, something like this, where it's kind of just a string, I think these are each like, I want to say like six to 12 feet long, something like that, where you can kind of just string it through however you want, doesn't really matter. Something like that would work for us. And for the cutting boards, pretty much this is gonna act as a light diffuser, potentially. So if we take the lights here, um, I guess I'll just turn it on right here. And then we put, actually I might have to open this. All right, I guess we'll just take this one right here. And pretty much the idea is, this is gonna be the lights like this. And then we wanna have clear uh, translucent red pieces right here. But because of the way these are made, there's different bulbs. 
and rather than just having every so often uh, a bulb that you can brightly see, we thought we could use um, something like this and then we can put it like this and then rather than seeing like this, you can see the individual ones, put it a little farther back, you kind of just see the glow. So that was the uh, that was the idea with these. I'm not sure if that's going to work or if we're even going to need to use them, but that was the idea behind it. And then for the lights, here you get your nice little uh, remote and it's got buttons so you can choose which uh, setting you want the lights to be in, something like that. So for some for a convention like Brick Fair, it'll be really nice to be able to kind of just take a remote, pop it on, pop it off. Um, like this. It also works for both of them, so that's interesting. Um, sometimes, depending on how it's pointing, it only affects one of them, as you can see there. Or it affects both. It's, it's kind of a little finicky, but it's a little bit better than having to, you know, have a little pull-away panel on the mock or something. And something that's also interesting is this does work. I tried this underneath my table, and this is, I mean, this is a pretty thick uh, plastic table, but go like this and it works. So that's actually really nice. That means we basically you can stick these in the mock and we don't have to worry about trying to put them, uh, make them accessible. You can kind of just take your little remote, turn them on, set the setting you want. Hopefully there we go and then you kind of just go with it. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up episode one of building the Imperial Communications Base in LEGO. Now, I know we didn't get actual progress done on the mock, but next week, I promise to you, there will be a lot of progress, physical progress, that I'll be able to show off. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comments. If there's anything I should add or take out, anything like that, leave that in the comments. I'll definitely be reading the comments to get your guys' feedback. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.